Tonight on 2020, the scandal that put a glaring new spotlight on college sexual assault. After a Rolling Stone article of that scandal rocking the University of Virginia. It was one of the biggest stories to ever hit a college campus ever. That elite college, University of Virginia, an alleged frat house attack on a student known only as Jackie. She doesn't tell police, but she does tell the renowned Rolling Stone magazine. Is this the first we're finding out? By reading a magazine? Really? Now, speaking only to 2020, the dean who says she was unfairly villainized. They made it look like I used the trust of young women to cover up rapes. But tonight, what's the real story behind an expose that fell apart? Series of discrepancies. 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 Wow, I didn't say any of that. Was it all a devious plot by Jackie making up the attack to snare the real boy who had rejected her. She's pulling out all the stops. She's doing anything she can to get you to fall in love with her. And the measures become more and more desperate. You believe she stole your story. And next week, it's Rolling Stone on the stand in a blockbuster libel trial. Now, the key players and deposition tapes never seen in public of a reporter whose article had to be retracted. I had full faith in Jackie and discovering that she had misled me was just devastating. 9,000 keystrokes. We were done. What happened to Jackie? Here's Amy Robach. Welcome weekend at the University of Virginia. When 20,000 students descend on the small, idyllic southern city of Charlottesville, the campus grounds suddenly alive with wide-eyed first years and their families, steadying themselves for that first collegiate Instagram post and long hug goodbye. Why did you choose to go to UVA? It's a school that's known for having a really wide range of effective academic programs uh, and the campus is really nice to boot. Founded by Thomas Jefferson, UVA boasts no shortage of accomplished alumni, including yeah. journalist Katie Couric, comedian Tina Fey, and the late Robert F. Kennedy. But it has another claim to fame you won't see on display in the rotunda. In the very beginning of our first year, we won the uh, Playboy, like, top party school in America award. There is a work hard, play hard culture at UVA that's, that's pretty pervasive. The year of that Playboy honor was 2012, where our story begins. And the main character, a young woman, a freshman, we're calling Jackie. By all accounts, her initial weeks are typical, getting to know the grounds in her classes and hanging out in the dorms, where she meets three other first-year students, Ryan Duffin, Katherine Hendley, and Alex Stock. Do you remember coming to UVA your freshman year, what it was like? I was pretty much just looking for friends at the beginning. And I met Katherine, and I met Ryan, and then through them I met Jackie. And we kind of formed a, something of a friend group in the first couple weeks. When did you first meet Jackie? I first met Jackie my second day at UVA. A good person to spend time with. We were hanging out a lot in the first few weeks of school, probably every other night, at least. Just as quickly as the friendships formed, they say it appeared that Jackie's feelings toward Ryan extended to something more. Did Jackie tell you that she had feelings for your friend Ryan? Yeah, oh yeah, pretty quickly it became clear that she liked him. But you weren't interested in her romantically? No, but I didn't want to date her, but it became pretty clear uh, very quickly that she had developed an interest in me. We did go on one date because I figured if you're willing to ask, you should get a chance. But after that date, I told her, you know, sorry, um, I'd rather just keep this as friends. You said that to her? Mm-hmm. And how did she respond? Uh, she started crying. Did not go over well at all. I guess that really shook her up when Ryan wasn't interested in her. She would be, you know, crying her eyes out with me and Catherine. What would she say when she was crying? It's just mostly, why doesn't he like me? And she was devastated. Yeah, I would say she was pretty upset. Um, more upset than I think the average person would be on a crush that's lasted a week or two. But soon enough, they say Jackie has a new man in her life, an upperclassman who happens to be a member of one of the school's most prominent fraternities, Phi Kappa Psi. She said that there was somebody in her chemistry class who wanted to go on a date with her. Did she give that person a name? Yes, she said his name is Haven Monahan. Remember that name. Haven Monahan, 
a name as peculiar as it will become paramount. This new uh, guy comes on the scene who's suddenly interested in Jackie, and Jackie loves to tell us all about it. I guess loves to tell Ryan all about it. And according to her friends, Jackie had a way with words. She was a great storyteller. She always told stories with a lot of detail and a lot of specifics that made you feel like you were almost like you were there. And on September 28th, 2012, Jackie tells her friends a story that will change all of their lives and countless others. Take us back to that night. I got a phone call from her where she said, hey, something happened. Please come meet me out in front of this dorm. You immediately go? Yeah. What did you see? She was sitting on a picnic table uh, near some of the first year dorms. She was crying. Um, she you know, was obviously really upset about something. What did Jackie say happened? You were waiting for her to talk, and she talked. Yes. Ryan claims Jackie tells him she had a date that night with Haven, one that would end catastrophically. Haven parked his car out in front of his fraternity house and said he had to run inside to grab something. He asked Jackie if she wanted to come along. Uh, she said yes. And she said that once they got up to his bedroom, there were five other men waiting in the bedroom. And Haven forced Jackie to perform oral sex on those five men. What was your response? The first thing I wanted to do was go to the police about it. Jackie didn't want to. Why? Because she didn't want to have to sit down in a police station and continually go over it detail by detail. So I called Alex and Catherine. And Ryan's right uh, in front of that dorm with Jackie. And uh, he's given me a call and said, something terrible has happened to Jackie. And you need to get here right away. We get to the dorm, and I go talk to Ryan and figure out what's going on. And he tells me that Jackie's been raped. And Jackie wasn't really talking much, just kind of sitting there, like, affirming what Ryan tells me. Did you tell her to call police? And that was kind of what Ryan and I were both telling her. And you know, obviously, right after the, the attack, she wasn't in any condition to go anywhere. She just wanted to go to bed. Alex and I spent the night sleeping on sleeping bags uh, in her dorm room to make sure that she was OK. In the subsequent days, Jackie's friends say they continued to check in on her. Did the two of you get closer during this time? Did she lean on you more? No, so we actually um, stopped hanging out a few weeks afterwards. Why? And it wasn't, it wasn't because of the assault. It was because, uh, yet again, she still would ask me why I was not willing to date her. And you know, for lack of a better answer than I don't want to, I realized that, that it would be better to cut off the friendship. It seemed like you came to the realization she couldn't accept just a friendship. Yes. Jackie chooses not to report the assault to the police and drifts away from her three friends. Then, almost two years later, a reporter from Rolling Stone walks onto the campus and puts Jackie's story, her former friends, and the University of Virginia in the nation's crosshairs. An allegation of a brutal gang rape at a UVA frat house caused outrage in Charlottesville. My dress is not a yes! And nationwide. Coming up, Jackie's story goes national. A student told Rolling Stone magazine that she was gang raped at a party. A campus and a country taking the story as gospel. The article was not to be questioned. It was the word of God when it came out. But would those words continue to hold up? Good evening, everyone. I'm David Muir. And I'm Elizabeth Vargas. In a week where alleged sexual assaults have been front and center, possibly affecting the presidential election, that topic continues to be especially relevant on college campuses. In fact, right now in the fall is when more than half of college campus assaults occur. It's been dubbed the Red Zone, and we're live tweeting during tonight's program. You're sure to have strong opinions. So join our conversation on Facebook and Twitter. Two years have passed since the alleged attack on a first-year student in this stately fraternity house on UVA's Greek Row. It's November 2014, and just days before students head out for Thanksgiving, they're blindsided by an incendiary 9,000-word expose in Rolling Stone titled A Rape on Campus. I remember that morning I woke up and I remember reading on social media there's this article that's come out, bombshell article, you have to read it. Rolling Stone article out of that scandal rocking the University of Virginia. The timing couldn't be worse. The school, seemingly cursed, reeling from the high profile murders of student athlete Yardley Love. The University of Virginia student murdered by her former boyfriend. And that same fall, the disappearance and murder of co-ed Hannah Graham. 
Searchers in Virginia stumbled across what they now believe are Graham's remains. It's not the usual kind of atmosphere on campus. There was something amiss. Now the explosive Rolling Stone story, but this account sounds even worse, more lurid and dramatic than the version her friends recall hearing. Jackie's date takes her to a raucous frat party at Phi Kappa Psi. She takes his hand as he ushers her into a bedroom. The door closes behind them, the room pitch black inside. A body barrels into her, tripping her backward, crashing through a low glass table. She hears someone say, grab its expletive leg, and that's when Jackie knows she is going to be raped. Three hours of sheer agony, as she says seven men took turns raping her. Jackie runs shoeless out of the frat house, face beaten, her red dress spattered with blood. She runs into the arms of three friends, but instead of going to the police, there's a heated debate. One friend warning she's going to be the girl who cried rape and will never be allowed into any frat party again. While the article contains rich detail about the night in question, the reporter says Jackie declined to identify her attackers by name. The journalist who broke the story for Rolling Stone, Sabrina, Sabrina, Sabrina Rubin Erdely. The Rolling Stone reporter, Sabrina Rubin Erdely, becomes a rock star in her own right, a seasoned journalist with numerous sexual assault stories to her portfolio. I met a young woman named Jackie. She, she becomes a sought after talk show guest, hammering the UVA administration for what she says was indifference to Jackie's claims. She um, went to the administration and told them that she had been gang raped and the administration did nothing about it. In fact, in the article, Jackie claims she told the administration about two other rape allegations at that same fraternity, but says no action was taken. Not only was there no investigation, but the campus also, the administration apparently decided that um, there was no reason to warn the rest of the campus that there had been right. multiple allegations of gang rape against a fraternity that continued to hold parties every weekend. And another lightning strike in the article? Jackie once asked Associate Dean of Students Nicola Ramo why UVA's rape stats were hard to find. She says the dean answered, because nobody wants to send their daughter to the rape school. It was my sense that the University of Virginia was just stonewalling and not allowing Jackie to get help. If Jackie sounded credible to anyone, it was this woman. My attack happened five weeks into my college career. I was 17. Liz Zakura was another young freshman when she says she was gang raped at the same Phi Kappa Psi house at UVA in 1984. I just remember this young man you know, I was clearly impaired, locked me in a room and cut the lights. You were screaming. I was screaming and I thought, I'm going to die here. But Securo survived and ultimately turned in her attacker. William Beebe pleaded guilty to aggravated sexual battery, making her a hero to sex assault survivors. You wrote a memoir about your experience. How well known is the Liz Sakura story on campus? My book is in the library, it's in the Women's Center. There was a book tour, it was national, so it's very well known. So Liz Sakura was only too willing to participate in that Rolling Stone article, concerned that history was possibly repeating itself. You were obviously struck by the similarities of Jackie's story to your story. How so? What specifically? Well, the house, first of all, and I think, I think Sabrina probably thought, oh my God, is this some sort of sick tradition? Know who else was wondering? The federal government. One of the reasons Rolling Stone was interested in UVA is because at that time, it was one of 85 schools under investigation for allegedly mishandling sexual assault complaints. UVA was not providing prompt or equitable responses to sexual assault victims who chose to report. When the article comes, there is a torrent of reaction. Shock, not just at Jackie's horrific attack, but also at the way the university handled her case. Dina Ramo, the public face of the scandal, becomes public enemy number one. University! As protesters replace partygoers on UVA's Greek Row. Why do we want an Phi Kappa Psi House is defaced, a brick thrown through its window. UVA Center for Rape Studies, spray painted across its exterior. I stand with Jackie hashtags trend nationwide. UVA President Teresa Sullivan holds a press conference. We have a problem 
and we're going to get after it. Suspending Greek life and calling for Charlottesville police to investigate the heinous crime. It was something I had to struggle with. Did we know this? <laughs> Did anyone tell us this? Is this the first we're finding out by reading a magazine? Really?